Hello and welcome to the CoinSec podcast. This is episode number nine. We are uh, currently recording on uh, today is what is it today? The fifteenth uh, of March, and today it's just going to be two hosts. Um, you've got myself, Bo Bullock, and I am uh, with the the one and only uh, the man of the hour. Um, what else can I call you, Ralph? <laughs> <laughs> Ralph May, <laughs> the, the one who made it. <laughs> the one who made it. The only one, man. Tonight. No, normally, I'm the guy who's got something else going on. I know. We actually. I'm, I'm pretty on. sure we talked about firing you last week. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make <laughs> something about like three strikes, you're out, kind of thing. Yeah. No. It, it sounds like it. It's, it seems like every time we schedule the episode, it just like I, I have something going on, or it's like, literally I'm, that's the same event. night every week. <laughs> <laughs> it's well it actually kind of moves around a bunch but a i'm not bit, gonna defend a little myself. bit it's I okay mean, no, it's all right it's like all right. this no, week it's okay. this week we tried really hard to get the schedule to work so steve could be on because he's in london um sure. and it's fi- like basically five hours ahead of us and yeah. so we tried to we tried to do it earlier in the day and i don't know he had something come up and i was like dude just like go to bed early get up at two in the morning and jump on with us for an hour and <laughs> film a freaking podcast it's not that big of a deal um i think it's just you guys ran out of guest hosts to throw in my spot and now you're upset about it <laughs> uh, well we will find more. hey if you're listening to this and you want to come on the show please just you know send us an email <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm 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 excited to be back here um in all honesty cool um and mike is off doing something i think he was he was uh chasing down a fire that happened um something something along the lines of he got his his google account banned for doing something so <laughs> fun stuff um par yep so uh, if you if this is your first time listening to the CoinSec podcast, um, the CoinSec podcast is a podcast about cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies, and we try to focus on any of the news related to securing the different cryptocurrencies. And, and, and in addition, we we try to provide some insight from our current uh, occupations, which both of us, uh, Ralph and myself, are red teamers, pen testers by trade. So. We day-to-day deal with a lot of uh, basically just hacking of different organizations and are trying to bring um, that sort of mindset into taking a look at cryptocurrencies and trying to figure out different ways to, um, you know, A, break them in any way we can and then um, hopefully provide some light to help uh, organizations who are trying to, like, kind of implement this stuff, um, you know, help help them know uh, better ways about going going about implementing this stuff rather than just jumping right in because it's the latest buzzword. So um, let's talk about some prices first, as we we typically do at the beginning of each episode. Um, so, like I said, this is March fifteenth of twenty eighteen, and we're currently sitting at an overall market cap of three hundred thirty two billion dollars, which is actually down about thirty billion from last week. Um, I saw a bit of a drop this morning that um, like, so, so Bitcoin's actually at like eight eighty three hundred ish right now. Um, it actually dipped below 8,000 uh, earlier this morning, which is kind of interesting. And um, I think some of the, like some of the, the possible reasons behind this week's drop is actually uh, Google uh, announced that they're doing a ban on all crypto ads on uh, Google's website. Um, so with that, you know, you're going to obviously have the FUD that, oh, no, you know, nobody will ever see anything related to Bitcoin ever again, because the only place you could ever see that is on Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's it's just kind of it, it's one of those things where I think we kind of all see the saw the writing on the wall as far as that happening, um, mainly just because of all the uh, like the spam and the other kinds of like predatory advertising that were going on. I mean, I mean, that's what I'm guessing Google's like real strategy strategy behind that was. Yeah. Um, it's, it, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where uh, we might see more of that mm-hmm. as far, but, but, it, you know, does that really change the technology? I don't know, but it sure does change the price though, I guess, you know? 
Yeah, well, what's interesting, um, so Cointelegraph actually had an interesting article out there um, from, I think it's today, actually, um, that they, so they, they, they were talking about like how like there's this one thing that is bad this week. Like there's like there is not really much else out there in terms of, you know, negative news. Um, but there's a ton of other positive news that is not really in, in, the, in the light. Um, so here, here's a bunch of things that were positive news this past week that it, it's it's really odd why we're seeing this kind of like downturn. Um, sorry. Right, so Square Cash. So, you know, the little Square readers, right? Um, Love them. They added, they added Bitcoin buys and sell options for users in Wyoming. Um, and they're looking, they're actually applying for the New York Bit license to bring Bitcoin, the same Bitcoin, Bitcoin option to New York. Um, so that's pretty huge. Uh, a P2P payment technology called Circle uh, launched on, um, a crypto investment app called Circle Invest across 46 states. Um, that's another big piece of news. Uh, so the House of Reps actually met this week. Um, they had a cryptocurrency meeting. Um, it was on March 14th, and one of uh, Coinbase's chief legal and risk officers was there, or I guess the chief legal and risk officer from Coinbase. And they were able to kind of expand on the view that current U.S. regulations are harming uh, technological innovation, um, including things like blockchains, right? So the, the, the whole gist of it was like uh, they were trying to get them to, um, I don't know, loosen up regulation um, as opposed to like kind of cranking down because... I mean, blockchain is a technological innovation, um, whether you like it or not. I mean, it's definitely um, something that's going to be part of a lot of things in the future. And, um, you know, going about just, I mean, yes, regulation is necessary, but um, also don't don't harm the innovation while you're at it. And then lastly, the other big positive thing this week um, adult entertainment company Playboy announced that it would be creating an online payment wallet that supports crypto, um, including the Vice Industry token. So, hey, I mean that's it, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a token, right? Well, so I I'm not 100 percent certain on that, but I think it's mainly just on the payments, the payment options. Um, but that would be funny, the the Playboy token. <laughs> the Playboy token. I don't know. I feel like, uh, you know, this is a little side note, but I feel like Playboy has been struggling to make their uh, their uh, stake in the, uh, you know, the dot com era. Right. Uh, you know, I know I know we're not early dot com. We're kind of far along in this, uh, you know, Web 2.0 or 3.0, wherever you want to you know lay your stake at. But uh, Playboy, interestingly enough, I feel like it's had a hard time adjusting to the whole uh, you know, always on uh, industry that we kind of have now and uh, making their uh, the profit from that. Um, I don't know. I have two feelings about that. Maybe it's the whole, hey, we put blockchain in the name. We're better now. Or, <laughs> <laughs> that is, it a, uh, it, it, or is it a take on, you know, hey, we're, uh, you know, we're open to new monetization, uh, you know, platforms or ways of accepting money. So, um, very interesting either mm -hmm. way. Didn't didn't Playboy kind of recently make a move toward um, like more like professional content, like meaning like less less porno stuff? Oh, yeah. So they got rid of nudes in the magazine and then uh, they brought them back uh, because oh, interesting. It, it didn't work. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure yeah, it didn't I don't work. Know. That was like their <laughs> whole business model. <laughs> I mean, Arguably speaking, and this has nothing to do with cryptocurrency, Playboy was uh, always like a men's magazine. So like the majority of uh, Playboy is uh, articles and other stuff like that. You know, the joke begins here. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the magazine was really just a men's magazine uh, amongst the, uh, the small amount of nude photos inside of it. But uh, that was their kind of claim to fame, um, you know, as uh, separating them from the other men's magazines in the industry. So yeah. But anyways, so I'm I'm actually still really surprised that the top three cryptocurrencies since the beginning of this year have not changed um, at all. Like why? Like I'm I'm really surprised we haven't seen anything kind of pop up. I mean, so it's been Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple the entire year so far. Um, you know, with Ripple kind of popping up above uh, Bitcoin Cash right at the end of last year. Um, and I don't, I don't really foresee Bitcoin Cash jumping back up to the third spot anytime soon. If anything, Litecoin or Cardano might uh, eventually catch up. Um, 
I see Ripple kind of tapering off a little bit at the moment. Um, so currently, um, we're sitting at uh, 8300 for Bitcoin, six, uh, $615 for Ethereum, and about $0.70 cents for Ripple. And um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where it is next week. I mean... This is, you know, it's it's numbers games right now. It's it's really, um, it's been kind of a bear month uh, since the beginning of March. It's been crazy. Um, Here, here's my prediction. I think we're going to continue to go down for a little bit longer. I mean, I could absolutely be wrong. Um, you know, as uh, if I knew the future, I would, you know, gamble on it, but I don't. Um, and either way, uh, I, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like, you know what? Every time I look at the graphs, I'm always like, you know, there's got to be a downturn where we have like, stagnant prices for at least six seven months you know well stagnant's um, okay but um so i mean like we we've seen like three thousand dollar drop in the last month you know it was sitting at around eleven thousand twelve thousand a bit um a couple weeks ago i mean arguably we're still up immensely for, for sure for started. sure well yes i mean uh, since me and you initially got in absolutely whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's not even that's not even a that's not even a number worth discussing i'm just saying even from like last year when the big you know the big rise came right when we went out of the thousand and went into two and three and so on and so forth yeah absolutely um, but uh you know I, I i still feel like we're still significantly high in this market um but I mean, yeah I, I saw i saw some predictions um this morning, actually, that that basically we're saying that it looks like we're going to at least at least see six thousand dollar numbers soon, maybe even like in the five thousand range. Um, so, I mean, if that happens, probably wouldn't be that surprising. Um, I mean, would that? I mean, I feel like at like the five thousand mark, I feel like that's like a buy signal for me. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, take that for what it is. But I would. Yeah, we're I would take that as buy. we're take that as we're not financial advisors. Don't sue us if you lose money. <laughs> <laughs> I personally would probably pick up some at five. For sure. I, I feel like that would be too tasty to to let go. Even if it continues to go down, I still wouldn't regret it. Yeah, the thing, the biggest thing I got to say I'm, I'm kind of disappointed at is that we still have not gotten to a point in cryptocurrency where cryptocurrencies other than Bitcoin can hold their own value uh, completely um, uh, like um, not non-related, non-related to Bitcoin itself. Um, like, if you see Bitcoin go down, everything else goes down right now. Um, if Bitcoin goes up, it's like it's like as soon as money pumps in, everything goes up. As soon as money pumps, pumps out, everything goes down. Um, like I'd like to see something like Ethereum kind of, you know, like stand strong on its own or something like um, like Cardano or, or Litecoin, anything, anything else. Just like have have something valuable there that makes it worthy of keeping keeping some sort of price you know i, I mean I, th I still think we're missing the app right um you know bitcoin's first app was um the uh what do you call it you know the mon the monetary mechanism you know the currency right mm -hmm. um you know that would be the first app that we got but you know ethereum has the ability to actually for us to have apps that would do other things right as people create them you know the d apps yeah um, and i think that once we see more of those the value is going to start, you know, wildly, you know, changing because now we can value it on what it can also do besides just being a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a proof of ownership. Right. right. Well, value it on its utility. It has a purpose yeah. other than being a coin. Yeah. And I, I think that it, from a speculative nature, I think that's why we see some of the price the way it is because people kind of either believe in it or they're just trying to make money either way. Um, but, uh, you know, we feel like we believe in that it could do something more, um, when the more starts coming, uh, I feel like the price is going to absolutely reflect that. So for sure. Okay, cool. Let's, um, let's go ahead and move on to this week's, uh, news. Um, we've got a few stories here. Uh, so to start off, there was a really, really awesome blog post um, from uh, LekkerTech. It's uh, L-E-K-K-E-R-T-E-C-H. Um, so it's a LekkerTech blog. And it's a story about, about uh, vulnerability in IOTA. Um, so IOTA is a cryptocurrency that is, I think it's currently sitting at the 11 spot. Let's see. Oh, actually, it's, it's down to the thir uh, 13th um, total market cap cryptocurrency. Um, IOTA is, um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit familiar with it just based off of some research that I've, I had done in the past and IOTA essentially we're trying to kind of solve the internet of things version of cryptocurrency. 
And to me, that kind of sparked interest initially because um, in our realm and, you know, what we do uh, from a security perspective for, for a living, we see Internet of Things being, you know, uh, talked about all the all the freaking time right now. Like it's it's such a huge subject matter in terms of vulnerabilities and um, research that like seeing like somebody try to kind of like implement this in a cryptocurrency was really interesting for me. And, um, I, and even, even like, uh, near the end of last year, um, there was actually some talk about like Microsoft being interested in IOTA. Um, I'm pretty sure IBM has something interested in them as well. I'm pretty sure Volkswagen talked about implementing them. I don't know, like into their cars or something. Um, but, uh, so, all right. So we have, um, the vulnerability though, that was, that was brought up. Um, so the interesting thing about IOTA is that it's not using a typical blockchain. So, you know, pretty much every other cryptocurrency, like you look at Ethereum, you look at Ripple, um, you know, any, you name it, like Litecoin, any other cryptocurrency uses pretty much the same in like um, foundation when it comes to it being a cryptocurrency, which is the blockchain technology underlying um, the currency. So IOTA doesn't do that. IOTA basically created this brand new thing um, called a Tangle, um, which is like like you would imagine it instead of like you have blocks that are built on top of each other you now have this tangle of a web of like a web looking thing where nodes talk to each other and stuff um to validate transactions and kind of build on on the on i guess like the tangle is what they call it um so uh the interesting the, the, so this let's talk about the vulnerability so they created their own cryptograph cryptographic primitives um using ternary instead of binary for some operations, storing transactions in a directed acrylic graph instead of a chain, and using a central authority, the coordinator. So this is another thing with, with IOTA. It's, it's um, uh, I guess, um, alleged to be somewhat centralized based off of having this kind of centralized coordinator. Um, and the, the main problem is that IOTA uses uh, Winternet's one-time signature, or WOTS, uh, W-O-T-S. And this, again, this is coming straight from this blog post. Um, and um, it says that, so the Watt, WOTS, Winternet's one-time signatures, comes with weaknesses and challenges that more common signature schemes don't have. Uh, a weakness, so for example, a weakness that would allow an attacker to quickly forge a valid signature after seeing only one signature would likely be disastrous. The attacker would be able to perform the following attack. Uh, so they'd be able to monitor the network for pending transactions uh, using the weakness, uh, the hypothetical weakness, quickly forge a valid signature for a different transaction, sending funds to an attacker address. The IOTA network slash central coordinator would accept only one of these two valid transfers. Without knowing the details of the coordinator, this likely gives the attacker a 50% chance of stealing funds. It is likely that if the attacker provided extra resources to get the forged transaction confirmed, that the attacker would have an even greater chance of success. Um, so IOTA transactions can get stuck and, and then they need extra actions like re re reattaching to get confirmed. Um, this gives the attacker a better chance to get the forged transfer confirmed. Um, so, uh, you know, there's, there was a vulnerability there and apparently it's been fixed now. Um, but, uh, this is one of the things, you know, don't roll your own crypto, use, use stuff that's been, you know, uh, proven, um, to, to work. <laughs> Did, did they have to do a, a fork for this for this fix? Uh, that's a good question. I don't I don't believe so. Um, I, I didn't hear of any fork with IOTA. Um, I would imagine it has something to do with the nodes, right? Um, that are processing uh, the the tangle um, of sorts. But again, I'm not an IOTA expert, so um, not entirely certain there. But uh, definitely interesting to see another blockchain vulnerability kind of pop up. You know. Um, like we, we talked about Lisk not too long ago with that, that interesting uh, uh, pre-image of the different accounts. Um, and this one, again, like, you know, we like a lot of the vulnerabilities that we've been talking about so far um, throughout the different episodes have either mainly been like smart contract based or, or wallet based. Um, but it's this is kind of the kind of stuff that um, we, you know, we definitely need more people that are able to do this kind of research 
and look into you know the underlying blockchains because a lot of people just see you know math 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 uh it's probably secure <laughs> and, and <laughs> The more math, the more secure. The exactly. more hashes, too. It sounds like in this uh, equation, the uh, the the more secure. If you hash the hash of the hash, um, you're going to be good. Uh, I don't know if that's actually um, cryptographically sound, though. Yeah. <laughs> and, from, and from this, uh, and from this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, article. Um, it sounds like it's not. Um, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, we're. <laughs> This is, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of sucks too, because then uh, every time we say something like this, um, someone's like, oh, well, you know, what coin can I trust? Which one is cryptographically secure or whatever it may be? Um, but the question is uh, not necessarily uh, picking the best horse. It's uh, that we need to know that not all of them are built the same, right? True. And the other thing is like, the thing to keep in mind is that apparently some currencies or some blockchains like this well I, yeah, it's not a blockchain but <laughs> some <laughs> some um underlying transfer mechanisms can be changed um like this one was to actually patch something which is kind of interesting whereas you yeah. know like smart contracts uh you know they're they're immutable you can't change them yeah that's true um we definitely are dealing with different kinds of uh environments that uh don't always allow for easy change right right away or they do allow for that change and sometimes like what i was saying they take the hard fork as well uh where you have to get everyone else involved um to accept that change so for um, sure it sounds, sounds like in this case it wasn't uh something too difficult to implement but um yeah cool um so our next story is a uh there's a new tool that was released this week um from uh the company trail of bits called echidna um, which is spelled E-C-H-I-D-N-A. Um, and it's a smart fuzzer for smart contracts. Um, it's the f first ever fuzzer to target smart contracts <clears throat> and has powerful features like abstract state machine modeling and automatic minimal test case generation. Um, this, again, coming from Trail of Bits themselves. Uh, I have not tested it out yet, but it sounds pretty awesome. Um, if, you're, if you're looking for uh, testing your Solidity code, uh, and then trying to find bugs, you can now use this tool, um, Echidna, to basically go and fuzz your your smart contract and try to find specific vulnerabilities, um, which sounds awesome. I don't, you know, like in the uh, or the in the exploit world, um, other than smart contracts, like you know, fuzzing is the primary way of finding new vulnerabilities, and it's it's basically the process of hitting it with as much stuff as you can and seeing where it breaks. <laughs> and when something breaks, you try to identify what it was that broke it and then try to uh, hook into that where you can. Like maybe maybe you determine that sending it, um, I don't know, 10,000 A's uh, would, would break the specific service or whatever application you're testing. So I would imagine the same thing kind of applies to uh, what they're doing with Solidity code, they're they're probably just fuzzing various pieces of it, sending different um, pieces of data, and trying to see where it breaks um, to try to uh, associate where um, an insertion point might be for an attacker. I mean, do you think that we're going to see more of these kind of tools as uh, you know time goes on? I mean, I hope we do. I hope um, so too. This is this is a, a step in the right direction for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, where we have. I would say more commercial tools. I don't really care if they're commercial. I mean, if I think about all the tools that I use every day, most of them are open source, um, which uh, <laughs> I guess is just kind of what the uh, the uh, kind of the way uh, our industry works right now, um, especially from the attack side. But um, you know, seeing more of these kind of uh, tools that go around and scan this stuff so that you can kind of at least get an idea. I mean, like they're almost like Nessus for smart contracts, right? Yeah. Um, so hopefully we do see more of that stuff because I think that a lot of people that are getting into this don't necessarily have that expertise to look at it from, you know, hey, how can I break it? They're just like, how can I make this thing work? That's all they're thinking about. So Yeah, and I think, you know, other than just smart contracts, we're going to see more and more just normal applications kind of built into blockchain in any way they can throughout the next few years. We're going to see, um, you know, I would, I would imagine more like, 
even like just as basic as like web apps, like somehow trying to implement blockchain just based off of the, the buzzword alone, you know? Um, and then additionally, like on top of that, you know, maybe even like side chains that have vulnerabilities, um, you know, cause like a lot of the side chains are like centralized to whatever organization built the side chain. Um, you know, I, I think that definitely having the ability to dig deeper into, um, whatever's being impl- implemented there is a must. So it's I mean, really I cool could, to see things like this pop up. What is it? I could just see it now that like a blockchain Coke machine, right? That's how it keeps its inventory. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like fairly certain that is the example they give for like solidity code. Um, uh-huh. uh, like whenever like you're learning solidity, I think that's one of the examples that they like, they throw out there is like, here, like how to, how to create a, a vending machine. Yeah. No, I mean, it does make sense. Uh, but I mean, I, I think that that also is kind of like a highlight of, hey, it doesn't have to be about a coin for it to use a blockchain. Right. But uh, I think as we've said before, blockchain doesn't mean everything. Like, you know, I don't need a blockchain to like, you know, feed my dog. I, I don't know if that's a thing. To, to uh, beat you know, your dog? <laughs> no, feed, feed. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying like all kinds of examples of like blockchain not making sense too. So don't just like put it in front of everything. Like, right. Yeah. This no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thing. I mean, the, I think the best, the best uh, question is, can you solve your problem with a database? If the answer is yes, Oops. don't use a blockchain. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, you could argue that about the, uh, you know, the ACH system too, right? Uh, they have solved it with a database, but, uh, you know, could blockchain, you know, solve it better, um, make it more less reliant on one central source. Um, so, right. I don't know. All right. Next story. Um, WordPress crypto jacking. So um, a report from um, a site called Bad Packets uh, says that or they did a study um, that basically identified around 50,000 affected websites uh, that were running various crypto jacking malware Um, and 7,300 of them, actually 7,368 uh, of those compromised sites were powered by WordPress. And um, they basically indicated that uh, 81% of the sites were all running CoinHive, which that's that's no um, uh, surprise there. Like we, we, we've seen CoinHive a ton. Um, I'm pretty sure every single episode so far, we've had something where we've mentioned CoinHive just because it, it literally is in the news like every day that, you know, you've got, you know, various... Mining malware running, CoinHive. Um, it just it seems to be like the hot malware these days. But the other nineteen percent. Um, so if you if you wanted to learn about some alternatives to CoinHive, here's four other alternatives for you. Um, so uh, two thousand of those sites were infected by one called Crypto Loot. Four thousand were infected by one called CoinImp, C O I I M P, or C O N I M P. 692 of them were infected by Miner, which is spelled M-I-N-R, and around 2,000 of them were uh, infected by Deep Miner. Um, yeah, so the, I mean, he basically, he also posted um, a document on Pastebin that straight up lists out the 7,000 affected sites that, that were found since January of this year. Um, and even dating back to like November of last year, uh, apparently there was like 30,000 or so that were running at like November of last year. So, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think we'll see coin go away anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, I have a couple questions about this. I mean, like, you know, first, <laughs> um, of all these sites, uh, I mean, you know, could they have been renting something else? Uh, my, my <laughs> The other thing is that, like, how much money did they make? You know, that was, you know, I think I've just been brought up before. Like, <laughs> I would love to see how much money they made off of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Miners, because I mean, they're not, they're not very efficient at all, man. Yeah, well, I we mean, joked about that before, but I mean, <laughs> even just having like a couple hundred hosts running for like a day, you're still making pretty good money. Um, well, you know, in terms of like uh, mining um, cryptocurrencies, um, I. You know that that's a great question. I'm I'm sure there probably wouldn't be it probably wouldn't be too terribly hard to figure that out. 
um, after you've obviously discovered the address that it's pointed to. Um, but we're, we're going to talk about another kind of non really security related story here in a little bit, uh, related to Monero, which, um, we can jump into in a little bit, but, um, I, I think we might actually see uh, kind of a drop in mining malware uh, uh, pretty soon, um, or they're, they're going to have to switch up what they're doing. Um, and we'll talk about why uh, after this next article. But So what's also interesting about this is that all these, you know, um, WordPress sites, um, if they didn't have crypto mining hardware or crypto mining uh, software running on it, um, you know, the JavaScript, you know, would they would still all be compromised, right? It's just they're True. finding a way to actually take advantage of the fact that, you know, they're running, uh, regrettably, um, last week's version of WordPress because mm-hmm. this week's got all the patches in it. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm sure the, these are uh, a mix of older uh, and then newer stuff. But, um, you know, if we couldn't turn it into money, it would just be like, yeah, well, I defaced your website, right? So it does allow you to do a lot more now. So, oof, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's a good point. So uh, this is actually kind of interesting. Um, this, so, uh, you know, looking, when, when we talk about like securing hardware, we, we actually did a little bit of that. I think in the first episode, we talked about like secure, uh, securing your Bitcoins or, or securing any cryptocurrency for that matter. And, and we talked about hardware wallets, we talked about paper wallets. Um, all that stuff. So with with the, a lot of the hardware wallets, um, such as like Trezor or Ledger, um, you have you have what's called a BIP39 um, uh, mnemonic seed that is basically your restore code for if like, let's say that device got damaged or lost or stolen. Um, those are like the 24 words that you need in order to restore your wallet. It's it's your ultimate backup uh, code essentially. So a company um, decided to kind of build uh, something to to safely store that that code because so like when whenever you buy like a, a Trezor or a uh, uh, a Ledger Nano device, basically what they do is they just ship you like a little card that has like um, 24 lines on it, and you're just supposed to like you know sharpie or your 24 words down, like just write them, write them in pen. And so like, if anything ever happened to that, if you like, let's say the, I don't know, your house burned down, um, and your ledger and your, uh, your, your, your backup, uh, card were in there. You, there's no way you're ever going to restore that. So what this company decided to do, uh, is actually build a stainless steel rod. So this is called crypto hex, uh, C R Y P T O hex. Um, it is a stainless steel rod that uh, basically has a number of sides on it that allows you to literally carve in your 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 BIP39 backup code. Um, it, it can endure water, fire, shock, aging. Um, you can bury it in the backyard. You can burn it. Um, it's it's literally a steel rod. Um, there's not much you can do, but to hurt it other than just carve your stuff into it. Um, so, so they actually have a Kickstarter going and, um, like, so they're, they're selling it in multiple ways. They're selling just the rod itself. So like if you had, uh, devices or you had some sort of way to go and carve it in yourself, then you're good to go. Um, but they're also offering, um, an option with an electric engraver. So th- the option where it's just by itself is 26 bucks um, for the just the steel rod. The uh, the crypto hex plus an electric engraver is literally only five dollars more somehow. So for thirty one dollars, you can get like the electric engraver and like engraved like it's like a pen kind of thing. So like you you would carve in like each word um, into this metal rod. And then the other option for $42 would be um, getting it with punching letters. So you, like, you would like take a hammer and like punch in each letter into this thing. So I, what do you think about that, Ralph? I mean, is it, it seems kind of interesting. I mean, like you could, I don't know, like put it in a secure place. And if anything ever happened, like you've always got that steel rod with your backup code on it. <laughs> I mean, it's not a horrible idea. Just go bury this thing in the backyard, write all your words on it. You're like, yeah, man, I got this. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, okay. So in, in general, it's a clever idea, right? Um, but in general, 
you can do this with anything. Uh, you don't necessarily need to buy, you know, this metal rod. True. Um, I, at the twenty-four dollar price range, though, so, uh, you know, it's not a, a huge investment here. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, get, making a backup is a smart idea. Whether it's in a rod inside of a toilet or whatever you want to do, um, uh, yeah, it's it's, it's smart. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, person, I, I had to write definitely, down the definitely better than so, the, the just like the piece of paper. You know, like instead of just having the paper, yeah. like this is a much better idea. I mean, you still the, the other big thing is like you just gotta always make sure that you you put it in a place that no one will ever find it because this literally will steal your tokens if somebody finds it. I mean, the second somebody has it, they have your entire wallet. Well, assuming they know what it is. Right. Um, right, right now, right. you probably could get away, away for a while with nobody understanding what it is. Oh, so um, here, here's the way to do it, Ralph. This is what we need to do is we need to just memorize like some uh, like uh, just just a passphrase in our head and then encrypt our our 24 seed into like um, like, I don't know, like like some sort of AES encryption or something and then carve that into it. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, you know it might, might be a little bit hard to read but uh you know like that way at least it's encrypted <laughs> yeah i mean okay so this really does serve the purpose of like your house burns down right um you know and this is buried in your backyard shoot it could be in the house i mean hopefully you'd probably be able to dig it out but um you know if it was buried in the backyard it would still be there so um yeah, not a dumb idea. I mean, at the price point, I, I feel like you know it's not a horrible price for the i for the uh, the take on hey backing up my seat. Mm -hmm. So I don't um, really understand why it's shipping so late. I mean, I guess that's just I don't know. I'm, I haven't really ever tried to do a Kickstarter. Like I've I've participated in a couple of them, but um, like they're they're not shipping it until like August, and we're in March right now. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, on, it's on a, it's on a titanium. Uh, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah or or adamantium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's coming from uh, uh, Wakanda, straight from Wakanda. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have the electric engraver, you could just take any stainless steel rod and do this kind of same thing if it's of this size. So that's a good point. Um, I mean, not trying to take off the point here, but hey, but they have they have a a, a five dollar key ring that you can put a QR code on. And um, as your like public address, is it a stainless steel QR code? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, well, that'd be so that'd be pretty sweet though. Yeah, right. Engraved. Yeah, that'd yeah, be kind of a that. pain in the ass to try to do yourself oh, though. Like each little it, square. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing like the strippers who are getting the QR codes in the butt though. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a way to sell it. Well, the big argument there is: is it a Segwit address or not? Yeah. <laughs> well, what happens if you have to upgrade the address? Or what, what like, happens if they fork it? And I don't know, like, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> Even worse, what if you're like, I lost the password, so I have to get a new uh, you yeah. know, tattoo on my butt? True. Like, how many QR codes does it take? That's a great point. <laughs> so, all right, so they have the $5 QR code key ring thing, and then they also have, like, a $10, like, hider for, like, the ledger or treasure, which looks like it's basically a piece of plastic that clips on to, like, I don't know, sticky, like, a uh, wall mount thing, so you can, like, stick it under a desk or something. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know about that $10 wall or hider, but um, I don't <laughs> know. The, the, the steel rod thing is interesting. Um, just yeah, if you're looking to try to protect your stuff, that might be an option. Um, I, I, you know, I, I personally am not particularly like all that. I don't, I don't feel like great just having like the the card, you know, like just having like the piece of paper. So like having something more like carving it into something, or having something that, in the case of like a fire or a natural disaster, it'd still be okay. Um, is probably a good way to go about doing something. Uh, to yeah, I mean, you could think of it just like, a, you know, any kind of um, backup of even any information data, right? So you're going to want to back it up locally, and you're also going to want to back it up uh, offsite, right? Somewhere sure. else, have a copy of that data offsite, and then so you can recover it locally if you need and offsite if you're, you know, you lose your whole house or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Same good. principle applies. For sure. Okay, so um, the thing that we were talking about a little bit ago with the, the crypto jacking malware and the thing that I mentioned uh, relating to how I think that we might see kind of a downtick in Monero mining malware specifically is due to 
Uh, the company Bitmain, who is very well known as being the leading provider of ASIC uh, m uh, mining uh, systems, uh, just launched uh, what they're calling the Antminer X3, which is available today uh, for mining the CryptoKnight algorithm, which is the Monero uh, hash function. So um, the reason I think that we might see kind of a downtick and 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 malware specifically trying to mine it is because with ASICs hitting the market, we're going to see a huge increase in hash rate, and it's going to make any sort of mining uh, on a CPU completely worthless. Um, as soon as the ASICs hit the market, and we have you know um, crazy increases in hash rate, it's going to just destroy uh, CPU mining, and um, I, I, I don't think we're going to see it uh, really, I don't know, like I, they might have to, I don't know, change what they're doing. They might change tactics. Um, but um, I don't know. What do you think, Ralph? Cat and mouse game. Yeah. I mean, we're going to run into, uh, you know, Bitmain's going to come out with a new ASIC and people are going to be like, uh, you know, I want to change my coin so that you can't mine it on an ASIC. Well, and that's exactly what <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so Monero, um, they their whole goal is to prevent ASICs from doing this. Um, not specifically so that people can mine for for malware purposes, but mainly to keep the network secure. Um, because uh, the majority of the time the ASICs hit the market, they're very well centralized. Like you know, you have some big buyer that buys a ton of them, or even the vendor, even like you know, like. Uh, like let's say Bitmain controls the majority of the mining hash rate, that doesn't create a secure network because, you know, you have that whole 51% problem potentially, or, you know, the, the attacks whenever you have a lot of the mining power. Um, so what Monero is doing is they're going to fork Kryptonite um, into something else so that they basically like exactly what you said, like, so ASICs are in the market. Guess what? We're going to fork it so that your, uh, your, your miners don't even work for, for our algorithm anymore. Um, <laughs> I think that's super awesome. Like that's, that's amazing. That's an amazing tactic. Um, and I, I kind of applaud Monero for doing that. Yeah. I mean, if the, the thing is, is that, you know, if you do it a couple of times, uh, you know, the cost to manufacture an ASIC is expensive. Dude, did you um, see the prices on those those ant miners? Yeah, I think they even went up. I see them right now. It's like twelve. Yeah, yeah. So, I think before I thought it was like seven or something. I well, don't yeah. Know, so you saw batch two probably is what you're looking at. Uh, batch one. Okay. Yeah, batch one, which is coming out in May uh, or shipping in May, twelve thousand dollars for one miner. Twelve thousand. I mean, what's what's the anticipated? And I use like air quotes here. Return on investment for that? Like, how how long would you have to mine? Yeah, that's a good like question. A, I, have, I haven't actually done the numbers, but like um, a month or something. I mean, you know, let, uh, we're we're also making some presumption on like the hash rate saying somewhat linear, whereas that's probably. Not well, what, true. so this is what's hilarious about this is um, the fork that uh, the Monero is doing is happening in April. And those those miners aren't going to even hit like your <laughs> your you're not going to be able to mine with them until May. So. If everyone switches off of like Monero's current Kryptonite version to the new one, um, mm -hmm. it's gonna be worthless. You're not gonna make anything. My question is: Is Bitmain mining with these suckers right now, and then oh, they're selling them definitely. off to so, to fund their uh, you know development cost? Again? So uh, Fluffy Pony, if you uh, aren't uh, familiar, he is the uh, core kind of lead behind Monero. I, I saw him tweet uh, that they they have actually been presuming since about December that uh, somebody had ASICs. And that's kind of what prompted this whole uh, fork in the first place. And like he pointed to one of their articles that they wrote up in the beginning of February talking about doing a fork. And um, so, yeah, I absolutely like, I mean, it sounds like they have been using them already. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. So that that first batch, twelve thousand dollars. The second batch in June is uh, six seventy six hundred dollars um, for a single miner. So. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, and uh, as much as they might not be used for um, Monero, um, some other coins that do use it will could not fork it or whatever it may be. Or uh, weirdly enough, for the people who have bought this miner, somebody will be like, we made one that hasn't forked so that you definitely can use your miner, you know? Um, yeah. That's, so we'll see that as well. Yeah. Well, so Electronium is a crypto night algorithm as well. So Electronium yeah. was originally forked from Monero. And Electronium is something that will probably get pretty pretty beat up from this too. Um, like it's gonna be it's gonna be rough because actually that's probably I would imagine where the majority of the hash rates is gonna go is probably straight to Electronium because um, unless unless Electronium has the same plan to do a fork as well, um, which I haven't heard so far, um, you know they 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 might end up getting quite a bit of hash rate um, off of these ASICs if Monero does indeed fork. So, I mean, this really hits at the heart of like some of the complaints of the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem is that, you know, when, when does it stop, right? When does the arms race eventually reach the point where we're like, don't have enough power to run these things anymore? Or, you know, um, do we keep making them more efficient, but yet increasing the difficulty? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer. I just, I can see the arms race as, as it's building up, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a huge argument out there about the efficiency and, and power usage behind mining. And it's actually really interesting when you look at those numbers compared to any other manufacturing or any other, like gold mining even, uses way more energy and is way more expensive than, than Bitcoin mining. Um, yeah. And, so... And I'm kind of in that court as well, but it's kind of like as we increase difficulty, like where where does it start cusping, right? Um, but you know, maybe adoption fixes that. So well, yeah, I mean, dude, we're about to see Samsung, um, you know, major major microchip uh, retailer jump into the ASIC market. <laughs> so that hopefully we get it in our S10. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Mining oh, ASICs as I'm making phone calls. Yeah, the, mining ASICs. Yeah, ASIC you are. <laughs> I don't think you were on when we were talking about Electronium um, uh, and their their mobile miner. Were you were you on that episode? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So the, the thing that's crazy is like they they basically aren't really mining on the phone. They're just all they were doing is baselining it. And yep. Yeah, it's crazy. So hey, maybe if you have an ASIC, they might actually let you mine. Yeah, I don't know, though. I do feel like it does cut into this whole battery life thing that we all cry about every day. My phone only lasts 13 hours. Right. You know, if it's <laughs> if the little ASICs in there, you're going to be like, this thing only lasts like an hour and a half, man. This thing sucks. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> but, anyway. but it cranks out some hashes. Yeah, I know, right? I made 10 bucks, man. Yep. <laughs> During this phone call. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't pay for phone calls. Phone calls pay me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All, right. All right. So <laughs> that's it for our news. Um, for our kind of informational section tonight, uh, we're going to look at another ICO this week. Um, again, you know, we're not financial advisors. We do not support this ICO. Um, this is something that it, it literally... There's there's a reason we kind of looked at this one mainly because they say they're unhackable. Um, <laughs> and uh, anytime favorite. I see that word, anytime I see unhackable, it's just a complete red flag to me. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to kind of do a little little dive through this one. So tonight we're going to be looking at the Crypto Secure ICO. So Crypto Secure is at uh, CryptoSecure.com. Um, right on the front page of their site, they have a quote from John McAfee that says, Crypto Secure overcomes the largest threat facing the cryptoverse, stolen coins. And then within their next kind of like big statement, they say, the Crypto Secure platform is unique, private, unhackable, designed specifically for crypto markets, protected by multiple patents and proprietary technology and with market delivery through four major stages. Are you ready for the major stages, Ralph? Oh, I am so ready. Okay. So crypto secure safe window, totally safeguards your private keys, data, transactions, and location. No threats from keylogger or screen snapshot malware. Safe window transactions are communication and communications are secure, anonymous, and untraceable. 
So it sounds like it's a kind of like a virtualized browser window of sorts for doing transactions. Um, so stage number two is the crypto secure wallet, which prevents all external access to their private keys and storage points. Stage number three is crypto secure exchange, a peer to peer exchange integrated with crypto secure security for seamless transactions that cannot be compromised. And then finally, the platform operational infrastructure. It's a hybrid blockchain trusted systems OS, uh, one time pad unhackable platform operational innovation. Yeah, lots of words there that I'm like, uh, okay. What? This is buzzword city, man. Yeah, <laughs> hybrid blockchain, <laughs> trusted systems, um, one time pad unhackable. <laughs> like, how many more things can we throw in this statement? <laughs> yeah no it's it's definitely a lot of that it's you can't be hacked this is this isn't this is perfect security so i mean so scrolling down and and looking at their uh like kind of roadmap um the first thing that kind of bothers me a little bit is it's it's a really really long roadmap to get to like um some of the main things like so q3 of 2018 is actually when they're working on the wallet so you wouldn't even see the wallet until Q3 of 2018. Um, they are doing what looks to be some sort of like a uh, user um, uh, kind of identification piece that they're calling cyber avatar. And that's going to be Q4 2018. Um, the safe window. Uh, so this is, this is interesting. Um, it says that it's, it's, it's an, Crypto Secure is launching a, an individual new locked down Linux OS virtual machine at the beginning of each session. So it makes me wonder if if that's just um, like like built into a browser, um, or if you literally have to like like boot up to like a Linux OS uh, to to do anything. Um, Sounds like a pain in the ass, man. Yeah, it says, well, it says private keys, wallets, and account details are guaranteed to remain secure, private. Each login initiates a new virtual computer, which is then destroyed at sign out. So how, how is that any different from like any other uh, like bootable secure distro, like something like Tails, right? Um, yeah. You know, that basically like just connects through Tor immediately. I mean, this isn't, I haven't seen any mention of Tor. I have not read the white paper, but um so, I mean, the general pitch is that if you use this coin, you have, and I, they even talk about it in the white paper, that it's not actually unhackable. They did say that, but um, that you have a lot less chance of getting hacked. And so that's why you should use it. Um, but that seems like, I mean, I get it, right? Nobody wants to lose their coins, but it seems like, like that's the only thing they got going for it. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, so they have they have something else called the mobile encrypted keyboard app. So the crypto secure platform safe keyboard mobile app is compatible with both Windows and Mac. It provides an image of a keyboard with geo coordinated tracking overlay. Like what the hell does that even mean? Geo coordinated tracking overlay to translate letters into geo coordinated inputs that are sent through a highly encrypted network. Like um, like how how does that like what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the better question is what is it what is it worth, right? Like, what is it worth to have something that's you know all these extra layers of security? And my next question is is that why couldn't any other um platform implement some of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, even though they said it is proprietary and there's patents and all this other fun stuff. Um, so, yeah. I mean, so the thing is, is like, this is, this is a, it sounds to me like a security company that obviously had a product or developed a product for general security, safe safety. Like, like, I mean, there's other companies like this that, that do like secure virtual windows. Like there's Bromium. Sure. Um, there's, there's a couple other ones. Um, but like, it sounds like this is a company that had something like that and then they want to get into the blockchain space. So like, you know what, let's do an ICO. Um, so let's talk about the coin for a minute. So 
the whole token behind crypto secure's platform is what's called the crypto secure secure coin like it's it's literally going to be called a secure coin um and so secure coins are blockchain ethereum erc20 standard tokens yeah I was about um, to say it's on Ethereum, isn't it? <laughs> it's on Ethereum. Yep. It's it's yeah. pretty much like every other ICO that's out there are just mm-hmm. ERC twenty tokens. Um, so there's probably there's I mean there there is a smart contract out there for it, um, and it says that secure coins are uh, actually more most importantly that they're a utility coin of the crypto secure platform. So. Apparently, secure coins are required to actually purchase monthly or annual security product licenses from Crypto Secure. Um, and then progressively, the full range of Crypto Secure services, including transactional fees for using the Crypto Secure exchange and ultimately licenses and or transactional fees for use of the entire platform. So, it, I mean, it sounds to me like... Um, like like so they, they they say like or so they have like a part here where it says like demand for the secure coins will be driven by um they're they're trying to say why there is actually going to be demand for these coins and first of all they say supply and demand so um that i don't know if i agree with that um <laughs> secure coins required to be used as payment for secure products so how can like what what would drive me to want these coins other than like in, in other than any other time that I actually want to actually have a product. So of yours, um, like meaning if I want to get a crypto secure product, like let's say I want to do the monthly service or something, what's going to prevent me from just going and trading those coins the day that I do it, you know, as opposed to like, uh, like, uh, try to harvest, like collect them, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, a great point. I'm looking at the uh, the smart contract, uh, the transfer admissions, and it looks like uh, 12% are going to crypto investors. Uh, another 7.5 are going to crypto investors, team members, and consultants. Uh, 15% is actually going to this uh, company, PTY uh, Limited, for licensing and dev partnership. Hmm. So they're paying someone else to develop this uh that actually you know, that that makes sense hold on hold on um stop right there because that actually makes a lot of sense to me because if you if you look at uh like if you scroll down and look where their team section is this is this was confusing me quite a bit a little bit ago when i started looking through this so if you look at their team um they have their ceo uh under their team it makes sense uh-huh. and their coo in there if john mcafee as as an advisor um they have another advisor and then you have a guy that is uh, an IT management guy and then a senior development advisor. So literally not there, there's no listing of any real team here. Um, like you have the guys who came up with the idea. Then you have uh, John McAfee, who's an advisor to like 20 different cryptocurrencies. Um, and then just a couple other guys. So the, what that tells me, based off of what you just said, is that they're literally outsourcing all the development to somebody else. Yeah, I mean that's that's it. You're you're buying in on the idea, and then they're going to pay someone else to build it. Which uh, I don't know. Security red flag waving right now. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't understand it, it's definitely not going to be secure. And I'm not even saying that the people who are developing developing it don't know what they're doing. What I am saying is once they give you the product, you're not going to know if it is secure or not. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Scroll down. A little you didn't bit write it. Scroll, so scroll down a little bit more. Um, so where you see that main operational relationships section, do you see that? Mm-hmm. So look at, look at technical development team. You see that? Yep. So crypto secure product development and it is provided through a crypto investor inc contracted distributed team of highly experienced industry yeah they're totally contracting all of it out uh 40 software engineers programmers blockchain developers da, 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 da. um so yeah they're not gonna have a dedicated team that's just 100 percent dedicated to this product yeah i mean they're really just selling you um they're selling you the idea and then they're gonna outsource it all out to build it um what it sounds like to me too i mean I, I, i'm not saying that no other coin has worked under this model um, true first 
because I haven't obviously looked into every single coin, so on and so forth, blah, 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 right? But it does feel like, um, and this is just my personal opinion, that they're pitching the idea, throwing it out and saying, hey, if we get enough money, we'll hire some people to build it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um, uh, well, it, it's, so they're, they're, the, the, the actual transaction rate is uh, one for one Ethereum, you can get 9,750 secure coins currently. Um, how much that'll buy you in terms of secure products, I have no idea. Um, so they're currently in ICO round one, which ends in just a few days on March 21st. But they're having a total of four different rounds. So if you're actually interested in this, um, it ends... April 26th. Again, we are not uh, advisors of any sort, so we're not going to tell you whether or not to invest in this or not. We're just, you know, throwing these out there because, hey, they said they're unhackable. Um, we'll see about that. <laughs> and, and regardless of our opinions or statements <laughs> about this, that does not mean that you will or will not make any money. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, you know, do your own research. That's that's really the the gist of it, right? Absolutely. So, um, Ralph, I think I think we pretty much covered everything. Yeah, no, we definitely did. Um, <laughs> Apparently, we don't need Steve or Mike anymore. I know. Actually, I think we got this, man. <laughs> we got this. Yeah, dude, for sure. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, well, all right. So, um, I guess we can wrap it up. Um, as always, thank you all for listening. Um, we, we really do appreciate it. Um, you know, I actually I met a couple people uh, last night at a, at a local meetup that mentioned that they had been listening to the podcast and have been really enjoying it. And I just I, I'd love to hear more from you guys. Like if you if you are listening and have any feedback, feel free to either, you know, tweet at us or, um, you know, shoot it, shoot us an email at info at uh, coinsecpodcast .com. Um, If you're not currently following us on Twitter, go do that right now. We are at Coinsec Podcast, and make sure you subscribe. Um, we're on we're on all like the major sites and stuff now. Like we're on Spotify, Google Play Music, um, we're on iTunes. Uh, you can probably we're, we're a pretty big deal. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're kind of a big deal <laughs> on the internet um, and yeah. small corners. Uh, mainly, I mean, you just know, my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're big. Cool. Well, again, thank you guys. Ralph, thanks so much for hanging out with me for an hour, dude. Um, I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. That. No, it was super fun. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, yeah, we really do appreciate you guys. Awesome. We'll see you guys next week.